Ma'am. Turn to Matthew chapter 24. The book of Matthew chapter 24. I announced this morning that I was going to be bringing a two-part message. This will be tonight and next Sunday night. I seldom do that, uh, but I thought there's so much material that I want to give you that it would take two Sunday nights on a very important subject. Matthew chapter 24. Look at verse number 3. Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 3. We pray for it a little bit scratchy. And I've been preaching for three weeks uh, just about every night. And uh, I screamed my throat out the other night. <clears throat> so I pray for him. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? That's three questions. And of the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. The thought there the Lord was giving these folk, men were, He's saying, There's going to be men come on this earth, that sound like me, look like me, act like me, and say they are me, and deceive many. And if it wasn't for the Bible and the Holy Spirit, you wouldn't be able to tell them apart. They're an imposter. I'm going to preach tonight on the subject of counterfeits. Counterfeits. Uh, We are living in a day of counterfeits. I mean, there's no doubt about it. We're living in a time... When men have learned just about to counterfeit anything and everything. Didn't used to be that way. Used to, when you saw something that was, I don't know, just say furniture, um, you'd say, boy, isn't that pretty wood. Uh, it, like, but if you see a furniture at, a, at a, a cheap furniture store, Walmart or somewhere like that, you say, that's walnut, that's oak. It's really not wood at all. It's something glued Onto a piece of chipboard. And it's, um, uh, I don't know what to call that stuff, some kind of lamp. veneer. Yeah, that's it. Veneer. It's not really wood at all. But it looks like wood. But it's not real. I, I stopped one night, this has been years ago, when them things first come out. I was coming back from Florida or somewhere, and I stopped, went in a store. They had a case there. I was going to get guys something. It had some of the most beautiful diamond rings you ever seen. Big diamonds on them. I thought, I'm going to look and see how much them things cost. One of them said $14.95. The other said, not the highest one in there was like $21. I said, Lord, have mercy. I can buy a diamond for $21. That's amazing. That's a beautiful ring. Well, that wasn't really a, r- a real diamond at all. It was a cubic zirconia. Uh, that's an imposter. It's a fake counterfeit diamond. And honest to goodness, I know you folks say you can tell... The, Difference, but I can't. I, there's some you, you could have on one tonight and tell me it cost ten thousand dollars. I believe you. I cannot tell the difference. I mean, they uh, 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 somebody somebody said, "Well, I can tell." I don't know if you can or not. Uh, you'd have to be a mighty good inspector, expert to be able to tell a fake diamond from a, from a real diamond. It's a counterfeit. It looks like the real thing, but in fact, it's not real at all. I I was in Florida one time and. Uh, I was sitting there and I was talking about this scripture. And I was thinking about the scripture. And this lady walked across the parking lot and she was a, what we call a fake blonde. And there's lots of fake blondes in Florida. You know that. And uh, uh, we used to call them peroxide, 19 cent blonde, whatever. You know, because uh, you can buy a bottle of peroxide for 19 cent. Now they sell it for $3 and call it Sun In. Uh, but it's, it's 19 cent was called peroxide. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, I, I walked in this world across across the parking lot and I said, Lord, that woman, you said you can't not make one hair white or black. That's what the Bible said. And she did. And the Lord said, look a little closer. And I saw the roof. And I got one blonde, that one blonde told her boyfriend, uh, she was talking to him, and he said, you got pretty blonde hair. Why would you dye your roots black? Uh, that, that's the way she was. Which, um, you know, I don't care. It don't matter to me. I like it. Uh, but uh, but I'm, I'm telling you, um, 
It's not real. It's not real. Be honest about it. And the same thing goes for everything else. Uh, uh, you see these movie stars on TV, you say, don't they have pretty teeth? Well, maybe they do. Maybe they might not even have no teeth. Uh, I mean, we've learned how to counterfeit everything. Everything is veneered. Everything is fake. And I'm not saying all that's bad, Lord. Uh, I mean, you know, we need all the help we can get. Uh, you know, if you need, uh, you know, whatever you need to get. Keep scaring people, uh, but uh, uh, but I'm telling you, we've learned how to just about veneer and counterfeit everything, uh, and and nowhere is this truth more true than when it comes to religion and and church. Uh, we see so many counterfeits t- uh, tonight. I heard about this man one time who uh, who uh, they, they said he worked for the bank, and uh, his job was to identify. Counterfeit money. That's all he had to do. He could identify counterfeit money. And son, he could take them dollar bills. You know how them girls at the bank count money? I, I do like one, two. They go, son, they can, they, can, they can peel that stuff off just like that. And count them hundred dollar bills. And, I, and they, can, they look up like this, you know, see if they're real. And they can tell you. And this man's job was to identify counterfeit money. They said he, 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 he could spot it just like that, somehow or another. And they asked him one time, they said, Boy, you must know, a, you must do a lot of studying about counterfeit to, un, to be able to identify it like that, don't you? You must spend a lot of your time spe- uh, studying counterfeit money. And the man said, As a matter of fact, I don't. He said, We spend 90% of our study time studying real money. And he said, If you know real money, Good enough, you can spot counterfeit just like that. Boy, I heard that and I said, that's a truth, amen. You know why we're living in a time when there's so much fake religion and so many cults and so many fake preachers and churches? People don't know the real thing. I'm telling you, if you've ever been around there, you know, the real thing long enough and you've been exposed to what we call old time religion and you know the real spirit and the real Bible and the real truth and the real atmosphere, when a fake or a counterfeit comes up, you know it just like that. And so tonight, we're going to take a little journey on our, through our Bibles, and we're going to study what we call counterfeits. Uh, another title for this sermon might be, All That Glitters Is Not Gold. And nowhere is this more true than when we come to religion. Number one, I want to say, tell you some counterfeits that the devil has placed us. By the way, the devil is the master counterfeiter. He's the perfect imitator of Jesus Christ. That's why you don't want the NIV. The NIV, New International Version, said over in the New Testament that we're to be imitators of Christ. That's not true. That's false doctrine. The devil is the biggest imitator of Christ in the, in the universe. The Bible said we're to be followers of Christ. We don't imitate Him. We follow Him. We're not faking. We're following the steps of the Savior. So tonight, I want you to listen carefully as we study the doctrine of counterfeits. Number one, I'm going to talk about the doctrine of reincarnation for resurrection. Reincarnation for resurrection. Ladies and gentlemen, this Bible does not teach reincarnation. The Bible teaches resurrection. You would be shocked tonight to know the people who go to church every Sunday who believe in reincarnation. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised who believe uh, 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 the Christians who say, I was laying in bed the other night and I was laying there uh, about asleep and Grandma came in my bedroom and Grandma's been dead about a year but Grandma came in there and told me that everything's going to be alright and that Grandma, she's come back as, as, as my Aunt Susie or something like that. You'd be surprised at the people who believe that there are religions in the world tonight who believe that you reincarnate, try your life again. If you do a little better, you'll come back as somebody different. And if you do a little better, you'll come back as somebody until you finally reach some kind of perfection and Godhood. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us we only get one shot. We only get one life. This is it. You're not going to reincarnate. Did you know in India tonight, 
that they there's people starving to death. And I've seen pictures of little kids starving in India, and it breaks my heart. And I've seen them little kids starving, and I, I, I see other pictures, and there are cows in India. There's enough cows in India tonight to build steak houses all over the place, and people can eat steak. But they won't eat those cows because they believe the cow is their Aunt Mary or Uncle John. They really do. They believe that Uncle John reincarnated, and there he is out there in the pasture. I'll tell you, brother, if I lived there, I'd just say, heck with Uncle John, wouldn't you? I mean, we're gonna, it's going to be the survival of the fittest. <laughs> uh, we'll just serve Aunt Mary for supper next week. Uh, she, uh, she couldn't reincarnate nothing no better than a cow. Uh, we'll just saw her up meat steak. Uh, they, they believe that rats are sacred. They believe that rats are reincarnated loved ones. Amen? I talked to this girl in, in Knoxville, Tennessee. We was over there giving out tracts one day, just up and down the street. If you don't believe this, go out and witness to people. And I witnessed this girl, and uh, she said... Uh, she said, I don't believe like that. And I said, how do you believe? She said, oh, when I die, I'm not going to cease to exist. I'm going to come back as a tree. Or the tree with branches and the birds of the air. And I said, you're a nut. And she said, no. Uh, she said, no. Uh, it's going to be like uh, Prince, Prince so-and-so and Prince, Princess Diana and Elvis is in McDonald's. And he come back as uh, so-and-so. You know, I said, yeah, well, yeah, whatever. You've been smoking crack or something. Uh, but you ain't coming back as no tree. I, I'm telling you, you ain't coming back as no tree tonight. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that is a false doctrine. The Bible said in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2, the day's coming, brother, when they'll come forth to the resurrection. Some to the resurrection of damnation and some to the re resurrection of life and righteousness. John chapter 5 verse 28, he said, Marvel not that I say unto you, the day's coming that all that are in the graves shall hear His voice. Amen. You're not Princess Grace reincarnated as Caroline's child. Amen. You're not Grace's spirit suddenly fill the room and you got reborn by a bunch of junk like that. You'll only get one life. It'll soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Just one shot at this thing. Uh, I'll tell you where this comes from. Have you ever been driving down the road and down this long country road and all of a sudden there's a big house up on the hill and it's got a white fence out in front of it and horses. And all of a sudden this weird feeling comes over you. And you think, I've been here before. Has that ever happened to anybody in here but me? You know and then right then, you know you ain't never been there. You have to just, I know I've been here. I know it. And then right then the devil said, that's where you used to live in your last life. <laughs> You were out there and you were a princess and that's why you like horses so good. And you rode across the fields and they did. that's a seducing spirit right then trying to convince you, well, I've been here before. This is what I was in my last life. I'm like, Lord, I'd hate to think I had to come back and go through this again, wouldn't you? I'm telling you tonight, reincarnation is a false doctrine for the doctrine of the resurrection. But let me say secondly tonight, let me give you another one as we go on this journey through the book of, of, the, of the Word of God on counterfeits. Let me say secondly tonight, the devil slipped in familiar spirits for the Holy Spirit. Familiar spirits for the Holy Spirit. There is only one Holy Spirit of God. There are a bunch of what we call familiar or false or seducing or evil spirits. Plural. There's a lot of evil spirits out in the world, but there's only one, according to the Bible, Holy Spirit. Now, you've got to remember tonight that I'm basing my beliefs on the Bible. I'm taking for granted that what the Bible says is right and anything else is wrong. That's where I'm coming from. That's where I'm coming from. I am a Bible-believing preacher, and that's my position tonight. I'm not up here to give you my opinion. And so tonight, if this rubs you wrong, you don't take it up with me. You take it up with what this Bible said. I'm going to force you in to either rejecting or accepting what the Bible said. I'm not interested in what you dreamed. I don't care about what your Aunt Susie saw in her bedroom one night uh, when she ate pizza before she went to sleep. I'm interested in what the Bible says about this subject. And as far as I'm concerned, brother, when this book says it, that settles it. Amen? Let God be true and every man a liar. Familiar spirits for the Holy Spirit. A lot of talk today.
today, these days about the Holy Spirit, ESP, mind reading. You see that nut on TV called Chris Angel, demon possessed mind freak. And this guy goes in there and he tries, he, he says he can do all kinds of stuff like that. I'm telling you, either one of two things. He's either completely fake or he's demon possessed. One of the two. The Holy Spirit ain't in a million miles of it. Uh, the same thing is true of John Edwards crossing over with John Edwards. John Edwards sits there like this and there's these people up in the audience and he said, uh, right up in here, right up in here, I see a green tractor. I see a green tractor. A green tractor. And up here a woman goes, <laughs> and he said, is that you ma'am? And she said, yes, my husband had a green tractor. He had a green tractor. Now you know somebody and millions of people is going to have a green tractor. And, uh, and she said, he had a green tractor. And he said, he's talking. He's talking to you right now. He's talking to you right now. He's telling you that he really appreciated what you've done for him on his birthday. And he's telling you that since he passed, they won't say he died. They said he passed. Don't use that terminology, brother. He didn't pass. He died. Amen. Quit trying to smooth it over and make it sound like it's so bad. He kicked the bucket. Amen. <laughs> he checked out. Get up here on this one, brother. I'm telling you tonight, brother. And they say, well, he's trying to tell you that he's all right and he's happy and he's peaceful since he's passed. Listen, that man in hell if he wasn't saved. He's down there screaming tonight if he wasn't a Christian. Get up a little bit on this one, brother. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, he, he didn't pass. He died. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes if he wasn't saved. And so, John Edwards is seducing, is hooked up with a seducing spirit. You say, well, brother Dan, what about those situations where he really does describe it and he gets it right? Don't you know the devil's able to talk to people? That ain't the Holy Spirit, people. The Holy Spirit ain't a million miles on a mess like that. Don't be deceived into thinking, well, well, the Holy Spirit. We're going to learn some things here in a minute. Keep your Bibles handy. Down just one hair, brother. And I'm going to tell you something about it tonight. I had a man the other day and I read in this magazine and this man said that he died and he went to heaven. And he said he died and went to heaven, and he he, uh, uh, he he died and went to heaven, and he said he talked to the apostles and seen Jesus and went through the mansions and had tours of the mansions in heaven, and he'd tell you all about it on a set of tapes for fifty seven ninety five. I was sitting there thinking, we got to tell, we got to give you fifty seven ninety five, find out what's in heaven. And I thought, you know, I said they ain't giving no heaven a bit more than I did. You don't go on vacation to heaven and come back. Somebody said, I went to heaven and back. No, you didn't. If you went to heaven, you'd still be there. Now the apostle Paul, the man caught up three, uh, man uttered, seen things uttered, not able to utter, and God gave him a little glimpse, and he come back. But guess what? When he did get back, God said he can't tell what he said. Let alone sell it for fifty seven ninety five. Ain't that right? God wouldn't let Paul tell. He said, You can't say a word you've seen up here, and here's some character going to sell it to you for fifty seven ninety five and tell you what he saw in heaven. That's not right. I saw in this video and these two uh, homosexuals got married and these two guys got married. You say, Brother Danny, what's wrong with that? Everything's wrong with that. We ain't got time to get into that. These two guys got married and they was interviewing them sitting in church. Don't worry, I'm not going to touch it. And one of them had the other one. Uh, the other one had his arm around like this. And he said, the Spirit of God was really at our wedding. I'm going to tell you something tonight. I ain't trying to be ugly. I, I love everybody. God loves everybody. But the Spirit of God was not at that wedding. Familiar spirits for the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We're Christians. We don't believe the Holy Spirit blesses, honors, leads, guides, directs in anything that's contrary to what that Bible says. Can I get a witness? Amen. I'm telling you tonight, we believe anything else is a familiar spirit. Listen, Lord, have mercy, Madonna and Kabbalah and Everett saying everything. He said, well, we just feel a spiritual experience when we go on stage and everybody's stripping and everybody's high on drugs. It's a tremendous spiritual experience. I don't doubt that one bit, but it ain't the Holy Spirit. 
It ain't the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, brother, people think, think everything in the world they feel is the Holy Spirit of God. There's a man down there uh, 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 in Forest City some years ago. He came driving down the road. Forest City, North Carolina, right down there at Ruffton. He came down like this. This guy came flying down Main Street, going 55 miles an hour down Main Street. I went, blam, hit a car, blam, hit another car, blam, hit another car, and turned his car upside down. And he jumped out, and a crowd of people gathered around like that, and the cops came in the newspaper, and the guy climbed out of his car, and he went around shaking everybody's hand and said, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And they put it in the newspaper, and they asked him, What in the world is wrong with it? He said, God told me, uh, the Spirit led me to go flying down Main Street and run into all them cars. Everybody doing everything claims that God uh, told him that the Spirit of God did not tell him uh, to go flying down the road and run into all them cars and make a fool out of himself like that. Uh, the Spirit of God don't do that. Them boys that blew up the abortion clinic down in Pensacola, Florida, they said the Spirit of God told them to do it. No, He did not. The Spirit of God will never lead you contrary to what He already said He would in His life. Because they're one in three and three in one. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the Bible is the written Word. Jesus is the living Word. And they cannot contradict each other. It's impossible. There's a lot of seducing spirits out in this world. All that glitters is not gold. It don't matter if somebody said an angel come down in my room at night. It don't matter if they seen 14 visions and saw things in there and saw miracles take place. If it's against this Bible, it is not according to the Holy Spirit of God. Lord, you heard about them? There was, I think there's like 18 Mexicans in a Grand Am. This is in the newspaper. Been several years ago. Eighteen Mexicans in a Grand Dam. <laughs> That's a picture in your mind, ain't it? I mean, they was crammed in there, went flying down the road, and lost control of the car, and ran off in a ditch, hit a tree, and wrecked. And the bad thing about it was, they was all naked. Start naked, eighteen naked Mexicans in a Grand Dam. I mean, Grandma. That's the truth. It was on the news. And they said they were going to a camp meeting. And there's a bunch of holy, holy rollers, as we call them, you know, going to a camp meeting. And they said, they was all going to this camp meeting. And they said the Holy Spirit told them to take their clothes off because their clothes had demons in them. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on just a second. Don't you mind go back to your Bible there a little bit? You don't take your clothes off to get rid of demons. You keep your clothes on to get rid of the demons. The man who was demon possessed in the Bible, when the demons went out of him, he was clothed in his right mind. And they said, the Lord told us to take our clothes off because clothes had demons. It wasn't the clothes that had the demons. Can you imagine little little bitty... Baby, grandbaby, I mean, I mean, stuck up on the grand, I'm 18 naked Mexicans in a grand, I mean, crammed in the back seat. Ugh, I like that. Grandma, grandpa. It reminds me of that story you've heard me tell. They said these two old fellas was sitting out in front of a rest home one time. They were about 90 years old. They were sitting out rocking like it is right here. And that was back in the days when streaking, y'all remember when... Back in the college, back in the 70s, whatever, whatever, a bunch of hippies, they'd all, they'd all take clothes off and go run across the yard. Well, these two old women decided they was going to go streaking. And they said, we're getting old. If we're ever going to do it, we might as well go ahead. And so they just took all the clothes off and struck uh, right across the yard, just like this, as hard as they could go. And these two old men was sitting on the front porch, rocking like this. And one of them looked at his buddy and said, Hey, what in the world was that? <laughs> he said, I don't know, but it sure needed ironing. <laughs> I don't know. That might be the way them Mexican was in that grand town. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I tell you one thing, brother. That wasn't the Holy Ghost. That was not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gets blamed for a lot of stuff that he ain't a million miles over. Y'all know my church presentation. I do a I do a a video presentation on. Uh, on, I don't know what it called, church worship, how to worship. And I got this video of these people up in Canada. And this woman standing up, and her testimony is this. And she said, and I was praying, and the Lord said, would you howl for me? And I said, not that Lord. And the Lord said, 
if you won't howl for me. Howl like a wolf. Howl for me and you. And she goes, okay, Lord. Oh! In church. And everybody says, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen, I'm not making fun of nobody. I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm just telling you, the Spirit of God does not. You say, well, Brother Danny, how do you know that the Lord didn't tell them Mexicans to take their clothes off? And how do you know the Lord didn't? Because I've got a Bible. I've got a Bible. And the Holy Spirit don't lead you against the Word of God. Say amen. Right there. And if the Bible's not true, your guess is good as anybody else's what's right and what's wrong. You got opinions? Everybody's got opinions. But they're like armpits. Everybody got two and they both stink. I'm going to stick with what the Bible says. Amen. It's familiar spirits. Now, let's see this. Take your Bible and turn over to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18 just a second. A little short Bible study here. A little short. A little Bible study. Deuteronomy chapter number 18. And let me show you something about familiar spirits. And all you young people get this real good. Get it real good. Familiar spirits. All these are false, fake spirits, young people. Deuteronomy chapter number 18. And let's see here. Uh, Look at Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse number 10. Look at it. Verse number 10. There shall not be found among you anyone that makes his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. You've heard me talk about that before. It's a fire to Moloch, a false god. Or that useth divination. Remember that. Observer of times. Enchanter. Or a witch. Or a charmer. Or a consulter with familiar spirits. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. That's Ouija boards. Harry Potter. The Smurfs, every bit of that stuff, none of it is of God. Call me old-fashioned. Call me crazy. Say you're out of touch with our generation. Whatever you want to say, those are familiar spirits, not the Holy Spirits. Now, let's look back at that list again right quickly tonight. Just very, 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 very briefly. First of all, he said, a diviner. In verse number 10, a divination. You know what that is? Fortune-telling. It is wrong. It is a false spirit for a Christian to go have their fortune told. You are not supposed to... You know, I don't even fool them stupid Chinese cookies. Uh, whatever they are. Fortune cookies. That's a bunch of junk. Every time I get one, you open up your cookie and it says, You have a likable personality that will take you far. Whatever. <laughs> That's a bunch of bull! A recent investment will soon pay off in great dividends. You will soon tr- find true love. Let me tell you something. That ain't the Spirit of God telling you nothing. Right. Amen. Say amen right there. Amen. You know how you know it ain't the Spirit of God? Because it don't ever tell you nothing bad. You think everybody's going to have good luck? Well, if it was really right, the one of them would say, you're going to break your neck tomorrow in a car wreck. See, it would tell you something bad. Somebody got bad news sometime or not. It can't all be good, duh. I'm telling you tonight, brother. Listen, that is not the Spirit of God. That's fortune telling. Ouija boards are wrong. Listen, you know what the old folks used to say? I still told my girls all, my, all their life. I said, them playing cards are of the devil. Amen? The old timers wouldn't even allow a deck of playing cards in their house. It's getting mighty quiet in here. That's right. The old, them, things has got, them things has got horoscope and astro, ast, astrological connections to them. Divination. Or an observer of times. The second one said. You know what that is? That's astrology. That means you don't go get the newspaper and say, Well, I'm going to find out if I should buy that car today according to what my horoscope says. False spirit. Get down on your knees and ask the Lord if He wants you to buy that car. Amen. Well, what else does it say? Enchanter. That's a magician. That's a magician. If a man has magical powers, it's coming from the devil. It don't come from God. Don't, write, don't get mad at me. I didn't write it. Which, that's anybody fooling with the supernatural. Or a hypnotist. 
Necromancy is somebody who, or wizard, like Harry Potter, that's of the devil. And necromancer is somebody who communicates with the dead, talking to dead people. God said that's a false spirit. You don't supposed to talk to dead people. You're not supposed to say, Mamma, Mamma, Mamma. If you're in here tonight, talk to me, Mamma. Somebody going to talk to you. Hey, Mamma. You better say this, Jesus, tell Mamma I love her. Or devil, tell her I love her. Whichever. Amen. All right, listen, Mamma, I ain't going to talk to you, and you can't talk to Mamma. You say, well, we're going to, we're going to, Mamma's died, and I never did get to see if she liked that ring I bought her, so we're going to have a seance, and we're all going to sit around the, in a circle, and we're going to burn candles, and the wind's going to start blowing, and the clock's going to start going backwards. Yeah, I know, brother. You know what makes them clock go backwards? The same thing that's in Charles Manson and UFOs makes clocks stop. That's right. And brother, I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, that's a false spirit. That's the wrong spirit, not the Holy Spirit. The devil's counterfeit is familiar spirits for the Holy Spirit. Number three. I'll give you one more and I'm through tonight. There's about seven of these. We'll get the rest of them next Sunday night. Better hurry. I said reincarnation for resurrection. I said familiar spirits for the Holy Spirit. The third uh, counterfeit tonight would be faith healing for divine healing. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, everybody with a brain in their head knows that God Almighty is a healer. God can heal. God does heal. The Lord has healed me. The Lord has healed people in our church. We believe... I, I can't stand somebody said, Oh, you Baptists don't... I hear that all the time. Baptists don't believe in healing. Baptists don't... That's a lie. I have never met a Baptist preacher yet that didn't believe in healing. I believe in... I believe everything the Bible says, and God healed people in the Bible. What we don't believe in is healers. There's a big difference. There's a major difference between healing and healers. What we don't believe in are charlatans going from town to town, ripping people off, making them give money in exchange for some kind of healing power, and selling God's miracle power like it's a cheap, like it's some kind of a flea market to get a blessing from God. What we don't believe is, if you'll give me $20, God will heal you. Well, that's a false doctrine. That's not in the Bible. There's nowhere in the Bible where Jesus ever said, give so much money and you'll be healed. Brother, we believe in divine healing, not faith healing. And don't you go out of here tonight and say, I was preaching against healing. I'm not. Brother, if you're sick here tonight, I've got, I've got a bottle of oil right there in that pulpit. We'll gather you together and we'll, we'll gather a gang around here and we'll anoint you with oil and we'll pray. But I'm going to tell you one thing. If anybody heals you, it's going to be the Lord that does it. And He'll get the glory. And God can heal. He can. I hear stories all the time of people who had cancer and go back to the doctor and the doctor couldn't find no cancer after people prayed. I mean, that's a common thing. Absolutely. Of course God healed. We've got people in here tonight that have been healed of cancer sitting right here tonight. Brother Derek, Miss Sue. I mean, that God has touched and healed. But you better watch out for this crowd going around saying, uh, you know, where they pick and choose who gets to be in the healing line and you know and knock them in the head and, and I, I seen one on TV not long ago he goes like this he goes whoosh and 45 people just fell backwards like that that is not according to the Bible nobody in the Bible fell on their back when they worshiped God everybody in the Bible check it check it before you get mad at me go home and check it and check it and nobody in the Bible fell on their back they all fell on their face Every time somebody fell down to worship God, it was on their face. The only people who fell on their back by the Spirit are the lost people who come to kill Jesus. And when He spoke, the Spirit of God knocked them down on their back. Check me, see if I'm right. You've got to grow up sometime. Might as well do it tonight. Amen. I know that's a little strong for some of you. You say, well, I still like so-and-so. I'm not preaching a sermon about what we like. I'm preaching a sermon about counterfeits. The sermon tonight is counterfeits. They got nothing to do with what you like. I like some of them too. I like some people believe and preach false doctrine. That don't mean they're right. Just because they got a good personality or a big crowd or a lot of flashy uh, diamonds and jewelry. Lord have mercy, brother. I don't care. I mean, I've heard them all. I listen to all them preachers. 
I check them out. I listen to many hen, Paula White, Joyce Meyer. I mean, I want to hear what they got to say. I want to hear what they got to say. And then you know what I do? I filter it right through this book, brother. And I do like I've always taught you. You eat the chicken and leave the bones in the plate. Don't swallow the bones just because you like somebody. Take what thus saith the Lord and let the rest of it go. Put it like this. Let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. Faith healing for the divine healing. Here's where it's got in our generation. They tell you if you're sick, it's because you've got a sin in your life. Now the truth is tonight, if you're sick, that don't mean you've got a sin in your life. It means you've got a germ in your body. That's what that means. It sometimes has nothing to do with sin. It might on occasion have something to do with sin. Many times it don't. Some of the greatest Christians that's ever been on this planet stayed sick their whole life. Fanny Crosby stayed blind her whole life. You telling me Fanny Crosby wasn't right with God? Are you trying to tell me Fanny Crosby didn't have no faith? Are you trying to tell me that some of these men of God that suffered uh, with disease all their life wasn't right with God? Are you kidding? Brother, they'd put any of us to shame. Fanny Crosby wrote some of the greatest songs that's ever been written. Are you trying to tell me she wasn't right with God? And as long as you're healthy, you're right. I don't believe it. It's amazing to me that every single preacher on TV who's a healer wears glasses. <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking, what you got them glasses on for, man? Yeah, I'm hearing aid. Why don't you just go think and get rid of them things? I'm just giving you something to think about. <laughs> When this lady went to work and she said, my back's are hurting. And some super spiritual saint I said, don't confess it. Can't you I just can't stand me around somebody like that? Don't confess it. I said, what you talking about? Oh, if you confess it, just say it's not hurting. It's not hurting. How can you say your back's not hurting if it's killing you? Here's what they believe. They believe, my back's not hurting. My back is not hurting. I'm not going to accept this, devil. I'm not. Let me tell you something. Your back is hurting. You might as well admit it. If you'd quit lying, the Lord might heal you. (laughs) Won't you just say, my back is killing me. Somebody pray for me. They might as well be honest about it. Lord, don't say, I'm not going to accept this back demon. I'm not going to, I hate to tell you, but you done accepted it whether you wanted to or not. The devil's telling me my back's hurting. That ain't the devil, you nut. Your back really is hurting. One of them preachers got on the radio and he said, Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, Now reach out there, friend. Reach out there, friend. Uh, the Lord's going to heal you. The Lord's going to heal you. He said, Put your hand on the radio for a point of contact. Somebody hauled out, Put your hand in the back of the radio if you really want a point of contact. <laughs> one of our deacons one time at Marion brought, brought me a thing about this guy. And it was from Reverend Ike. You ever heard of Reverend Ike? He's some uh, some black preacher up north somewhere. And Lord have mercy! And he had he had a, he had these anointed shower caps he was selling and sending out these specially anointed shower caps for a little gift of a hundred dollars to this ministry or whatever. You'll receive this specially anointed shower cap upon which, when you get sick, I just place the shower cap on your head. And he had his hand drawn on that shower, had his hand traced like that right there. Where, and, and the whole idea was that he's going to lay his hand on you and heal you while you're in the shower. I said, I don't want that thing, brother. And you get that thing away from me. There's something wrong with a preacher that wants to lay hands on you while you're in the shower. I don't want him to, I don't want him touching me to you. Lord, just get away from me, you perv. I'm telling you tonight, brother, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you hear me tonight, that's not yet that. You don't send out anointed shower caps and heal somebody like that. That's the wrong spirit. That's faith healing and not divine healing. Amen. You've heard my classic story. I know, you, I know you get tired of hearing this story, but I'll get tired of telling it. This fellow had his tent meeting. And everywhere he went, this tent meeting, some of them evangelists have these tent meetings where the same people come in every town, you know. And, and, they, and they get healed and everything. And then he takes that thing to the next town. The next town, he, said, he went to a big meeting one night. And uh, uh, it didn't work out that way. He, uh, he said, now, heal, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, we're going to be healing here tonight. We're going to be healing, hallelujah. Y'all are going to have some more money. Get the Kentucky Fried Chicken buckets out. Uh, let's pass them around here. Uh, let's fill them up. Come on now. Come on now, we need a few more faith partners. Sow a seed in this ministry. You notice how unscriptural all that kind of talk is? There's no such thing in the Bible about sowing seed in a ministry. Show it to me. 
There's nothing in the Bible about being a faith partner. There's nothing in the Bible that talks about seed faith or or um, uh, blessing. What do I call it? Blessing something or other. And I mean, I'm they, I'm some kin to Rod Parsley. I ain't got nothing. To, he's from up part of the mountains where my kin folks are from. And brother, I mean, he he can preach a plane off the wall. There's no doubt about it. But that don't mean what they're saying is right. T. D. Jakes is very gifted, eloquent. Uh, John Hagee, all of them, they're great, some of them are great preachers, I mean, they can preach, but I'm telling you, the Bible said, what great men are not always wise. I'm not trying to be ugly, I'm not trying to be critical, be a smart aleck, I'm not saying they're not saved. I'm just saying, you got to want, you want the real thing, you want to counterfeit, or you, you can find out which one you believe in tonight by checking out according to this book. Well, he went down to tent revival, and somebody come down the aisle to be healed. Here's Harvey. Here he come down now. He come down on his crutches. He said, what's your name? Guy said, Harvey. He said, Harvey, you go over and stand behind the curtain. In a minute, when the Holy Ghost comes, I'm going to heal you. So Harvey goes like this, you know. He goes over here and stands behind the curtain. Here come another fellow down the aisle. He said, what's your name? He said, John. He said, what's the matter with you, John? He said, I ain't talk plain. He said, now, John, you go over and stand behind Harvey. And in a minute, when the Holy Ghost comes, I'm going to heal you. And boy, you got that crowd working. You got to have that organ music. Dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Woo! You know, everybody's just going, and it gets real emotional, and it just gets whipped into a frenzy. I'm used to seeing them all that. I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm just trying to teach you the difference between counterfeit and the real thing. And brother, here's over there, and the Holy Ghost comes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, all right, the Holy Ghost is here now. He said, Harvey! Throw that crutch away. There went one of them crutches. Sail out across that tent. He said, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Harvey! Throw that other crutch away. There went that other crutch. Sail out across that He said, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, John, say something. John said, Harvey fell. <laughs> he didn't heal either one of them. Faith healing for divine healing. Now, I'm not trying to be ugly tonight. If you know somebody went to a meeting like that and got healed, praise God, more power to them. I believe some of them really do get healed. I do. I believe it. But I'm telling you, anything that don't operate according to the Scripture, I'd be real leery of as you. You'd be surprised if people say, I don't care what the Bible says, I like brother so-and-so. <laughs> you know, I, I love to listen to them. They say a lot of good things. You better watch this. We're living in a day, brother. You, let me tell you something, people. I ain't got time to preach on this. Everybody listen to me. You don't identify a false preacher by what he says. A guy can have 30 million people and stand there. There's one preacher... He can, he can, and he never quits smiling. He smiles the whole time the blessed program is on. It's very good to see all of you tonight. Just praise the Lord, and you're going to hell. You know, you know. No, he don't say that. He don't say that, that's for sure. Never say that word. I'm not trying to be a, you don't identify a false prophet by what he says. You identify a false prophet by what he won't say. Don't ever forget that. One more time with feeling. You don't identify a false prophet by what he preaches. You identify a false prophet by what he won't preach. The words are smoother than butter. But there are seven abominations in his heart. That's what the Bible said. Listen, brother. You can't smile through the whole blessed service. They some things. They some things. I mean, I'm all for cutting up, having a good time. We're having fun here tonight. But I mean, there's sometimes we can't smile. Amen. Now, Joyce, bless her heart, she never smiles. She's like Dr. Ruckman says, got a face like a 30 year Navy man. She's like, oh, the Bible says. There's just something, something is weird about a woman stomping around in high heels, slinging her pocketbook, and her husband saying, Yes, honey, preach it, darling. Now, something messed up with that. Now, don't get mad at me. Read your Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34 said, Let the women keep silence in the church. I didn't write it. I'm just telling you what it said. Some of y'all go out of here tonight and say, 
well, I just didn't like some of the things he said. Is, is it according to the Bible? If I, if I said something against the Bible, you come back and tell me and I'll apologize next Sunday. But if I ain't, buddy, you're going to answer for it one day and you're going to give an account of what this Bible says. I don't care what you felt. Ain't got nothing to do with your feelings. And I'm not saying these people ain't good, saved, moral people. I mean, these TV preachers and even the women, they probably live a better life than I do. They're probably a better Christian than I am. I'm saying, if we're going to take the Bible, let's take it like it says it and do what it says. Amen. Amen. Faith healing for divine healing. Lord, I was up in Michigan one time. I'll tell you this, and I'm through. We done, took a lot of time here tonight. There's a whole bunch more of these I'll get to next Sunday night. Um, this woman come to church where I was preaching up in Michigan, in Flint, Michigan. These are some nuts up there, buddy. You think it's bad here, you ought to go up north. They've been taught their whole life not to read the Bible because the Catholic Church don't want people to read the Bible. If you ever start reading it, they might find out what a mess they're in and get out. So they, try, they tell them, you can't understand the Bible. Only the priests can interpret the Bible to keep the poor suckers in the dark. And so we, uh, we was up there, and this woman come to church. She followed this one evangelist from town to town, from town to town, to town because this evangelist was giving out these special anointed loaves of bread. True. And everywhere he went, he had these anointed loaves of bread. And he's telling people, he said, if you happen to get one of these specially anointed loaves of bread, all you have to do is make your loved ones a sandwich and they'll be saved within 24 hours if they eat this special anointed. And this woman followed that guy all over the cities up there trying to get one of these loaves of bread. When she finally got one, her husband was lost. And she finally got one of them, they threw them out or something like that. And she got one, and boy, she took it home. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My husband's going to be saved tomorrow. I've waited all these years. And all my prayers are finally answered. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Well, she got up that morning, packed him a sandwich, put it in his lunchbox all day long. She was praising God. I, I, thank the Lord. It's, I can't wait. Well, he come home that evening. She said, Hey, honey. He said, Hey. She said, you have a good day? He said, all right, I reckon. Well, anything special happen? No, why? She said, uh, did you eat that sandwich I made you? He said, what was that? She told me, nothing happened. Nothing. Because God's Word don't teach that I can lay my hands on a loaf of bread and if you'll picture your husband a sandwich with it, I wish, that was, I wish it was that easy. I would to God that were true. You said, but Brother Danny, if you have enough faith, I... no, 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 no. You've got to operate according to the Scripture. Remember that veneer I was talking about? The fake blonde, the fake teeth, the, the whatever. Uh, You've got you to gotta remember, brother, the devil can counterfeit. The devil can counterfeit. Anything God's got, the devil's got a counterfeit for. And the only way you know the difference is by this book. That's it. The Spirit of God leading you according to the Word of God. Let's stand by.